Hi everyone. Um, in this lesson, we're going to talk about 8.4, volume and surface area. So in this section, we're going to look at um, figures that involve solid geometry, and we call these three-dimensional solid figures or space figures. They're different than the figures we talked about in 8.3 because those were two-dimensional or flat and you couldn't pick them up. But space figures, you can actually pick up, um, you know, or... Uh, an example of a space figure could be a swimming pool, so you can actually, you know, go into a swimming pool, whereas a rectangle, triangle, trapezoid, they're all flat. We're going to be looking at volume, which is a measure of capacity of a 3D figure, um, the amount of material you can put inside a 3D figure. Volume is measured in cubic units, and then the surface area of 3D figures, which is the total area of all the surfaces on the outside of the figure, and we measure that in square units. Um, I have a list for you all of some common um, solids. So we have a rectangular solid and the volume and surface area formulas, <laughs> and then we have a cube. And then the cylinder, the formula for volume should be pi r squared h. So um, the height is missing there for volume, as well as in volume of a cone, it's one third pi r squared h. Okay, so please make sure you make that correction in your notes. And then I have the surface area formulas and um, the uh, for a cone and cylinder, and then the sphere as well. So the sphere is your three-dimensional um, circle, like the Earth is a sphere. Okay, so what I would like you to do is take the formulas on the last page, and for each of these uh, space figures, I'd like you to determine the volume and surface area um, of each of them, and you want to use the pi key on your calculator. So as discussed in 8.3, um, when you use the pi key as opposed to typing in 3.14, um, your answer will be more accurate because the pi key will include more digits in um, the number pi. And we also want to make sure we round our answer to the nearest hundredths. So that's two places after the decimal. Okay, so feel free to pause the video um, and then you can unpause it and check your answers. Or if you want to follow along with me, that's fine too. So we have right here a rectangular prism, um, and your formula sheet, it's referred to as a rectangular solid. And we want to find two things, the volume and the surface area. So the volume of a rectangular solid, the volume of any solid or prism is big B times H. And big B stands for area of the base. And the area of the base here, the base of a rectangular prism is a rectangle. And I know that because um, 3D figures are named by their bases. So I know the base is a rectangle. And if you'll remember, the area of a rectangle is length times width. And then I have to remake, make sure I bring down the H for the height. So that's how I get the formula length times width times height. That's the volume formula for a rectangular prism. So when you're finding the volume of any 3D figure, big B, or the area of the base, will change depending on the shape of the base. So here we've got length times width times height, and it really doesn't matter which of those three numbers is our length, width, and height. We're just going to take them and multiply them together. And all of our labels are millimeters, so we don't have to worry about converting anything. Um, and if you multiply 23 times 11 times 5, you will end up with 1,265. And we label volume in cubic units, so it's cubic millimeters. Okay, next I want to find the surface area. So to get the surface area of a rectangular solid, it's the sum of the area of all of the surfaces. So if I was to take this 3D figure and flatten it out, okay, so I can show you here. Um, you can do a search for 
Um, you can do rectangular solid nets. Or let's do a rectangular prism net. And I'll try to find the, um, the website where it gives us all of the different nets. So it might be this one. No, that's not the one I want. Uh, maybe this one. GeoGebra is pretty good. So here's a um, rectangular prism. And what I want to do is I want to open it up so you can kind of see what it looks like flattened out. So as you can see there, it is made up of... Um, let me see if I can zoom out. Okay, now you can see, so the two bases are the purple um, pieces. They're your rectangles. And then the other four faces are what are known as the lateral faces. They go around the bases. So if you think about it, if I want to find the surface area, it's the area of all the surfaces. So I'm finding the area of six surfaces. You'll have two of each surface. So you've got the two purples. And then you have the two smaller blue ones and then the two square looking um, bases as well. So you'll notice when we are finding the surface area, when you write out the formula, you're going to do two times the length times the width plus two times the length times the height plus two times the width times the height because there's two of everything. So what I do is I just break down here um, the formula. So I'm going to have 2 times the length and width, we'll just say, is 23 and 11. Okay, because remember, there's 2 of those faces. And then plus 2 times 23 times the height, which is 5. And then 2 times the um, width and the height. And when you multiply all of this out... 2 times 23 times 11 gives us 506. And 2 times 23 times 5 gives us 230. And 2 times 11 times 5 gives us 110. And when you multiply all of those, when you add all of those together, you get 846. And surface area is measured in square units. So it's 846 millimeters squared. Um, if you've ever wrapped a gift with wrapping paper, you are calculating surface area. So it's, it's literally the area on the outside that would wrap the whole box. Okay, in the second figure, we have a cylinder. Okay, so like a soup can. And to find the volume, again, it's big B times H. So it's the area of the base times the height. The base of a cylinder, as you can see, is a circle, right? So how do you find the area of a circle? Pi r squared. And then we're just going to bring down the h. So that's how we get pi r squared h. So we want to use the pi button. So I'm just going to leave pi. I'm not going to put 3.14. Remember that the radius is um, half the diameter it's also the segment that is um, drawn from the center of a circle to any point on the edge of the circle. So 7 is my radius, and we're going to square that and multiply it by the height of the prism, which is 15. Again, all my labels are in inches. So now all I want to do is just multiply this out, and I'm going to use the pi button, as it says. So when you type this out, like if I was to use Desmos, I would type out, I would hit the pi button, which is if you look where the keys are on the left-hand side, where the ABC button is, just go right across from that, you'll see the pi button. So I'm going to hit pi, and as you can see, it carries more decimals than 3.14, so it'll be more accurate, times 7 squared, so 7, and then I hit the A to the B button, squared, and then... Make sure you hit the arrow to bring it back down onto the ground. And then times 15. And you'll get 2,309 
and we want to round to the nearest hundredth, so I'm going to round that to 0 0.07. So 2309, 0.07. And it's inches cubed, since we're dealing with volume. Okay, let me shrink this so we have some room. So next I want to find the surface area and the surface area formula is two pi r squared plus two pi r h, okay? And again, it's surface area, it's the area of the surfaces. So pi r squared represents the area of a circle and how many circles are there in a cylinder? Two, so that's why it's two times pi r squared. And then we have two times pi times radius times height. So if you'll recall from 8.3, 2, 2 pi r is the circumference, right? So if you were to unravel this cylinder, you would see that the length would be the circumference and then times the height. So I can show you here, because it kind of helps to see if we were to type in, um, let's do cylinder net, and then we'll stick with GeoGebra. They have some pretty good um, nets on there that are interactive. So net of a cylinder, GeoGebra. Um, and as you can see here, right, if I open this up, so there's your cylinder, open it up, you got the two circles. And then if you notice here, when I animate this, the, the length of the rectangle is actually the circumference of the circle. See how the length is actually wrapping around the circle. So the circumference is two pi r, um, and then you've got times the height which is your H in your formula. So all we're gonna do is just plug in our numbers here. So we would have two times pi times seven squared plus two times pi times seven times 15. And when you multiply this out, um, two times pi times seven squared gives us that. And then two times pi times seven times 15 gives us this. And when we add those together, we get this for our final answer. And again, it's inches squared because it's surface area. Okay, moving along. Letter C, we have a cone. So what's interesting about a cone is if you take a cone and a cylinder that are the same diameter or radius and same height um, as these both are, the cone will take up one third the volume of the cylinder. So you could literally take this cone, since it's got the same radius as the cylinder and it's just as tall, they're both 15 inches tall, you can take this and place it inside the cylinder and it would take up one third of the volume. So for cones and pyramids, it's one third big B, which is again, the area of the base, times the height of that cone. So the cone, remember, the base is a cylinder, so it's pi r squared times h. So you'll notice it's basically the same formula, except you're just taking a third of it. So you're really just dividing your volume in by three. So here we have one third times pi times seven squared times 15. And it's usually easiest to multiply this out and then just divide your answer by three. And when you do that, you get 769.69 inches cubed. Okay, your surface area formula comes out to be pi r squared, okay? That's the circle part, so you're unraveling it. And then you've got plus pi times r times the square root of r squared plus h squared. So now we're just gonna plug in, we've got pi times your radius squared, seven squared, plus pi times seven times the square root of Okay, your radius is seven squared and your height is 15 and we're gonna square that. 
Okay, and then you're going to calculate this out. So I would do it in pieces. I would first type in this, and then I would type in that. And you're going to get 517.96 inches squared. And then last but not least, we have the sphere. And the formula for volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So it's going to be 4 thirds times, again, your radius is 9, and it's cubed. Okay, so what I would do is type in 4 times pi times 9 cubed in your calculator, and then just divide your answer by 3. And when you do that, you'll end up with 3,053.63 centimeters cubed. And I'm going to shrink this down a little. So I have room to write the surface area here of a sphere, which is just 4 pi r squared. So real easy formula. It's just 4 times pi times 9 squared. And you'll get 1,017.88 centimeters squared. Okay, please let me know if you have any questions using the formulas. Um, I did provide and email everyone a formula sheet, or there is one on Canvas, um, and you know you may use that for the um, Chapter Eight test. Okay, moving along. So here's some application problems. Okay, and you may want to pause to be able to read the um, the problem, and then unpause when you're ready. It says Maya needs to replace the sand in her rectangular sand volleyball court. The court is 160 feet long by 30 feet wide, and the sand has a uniform depth of 18 inches. Sand sells for $27 per cubic yard. We have two questions to answer here. How many cubic yards of sand does Maya need, and how, how much will the sand cost? Okay, so when you observe or look at the volleyball court, what do you notice? If you're looking carefully, you can see that you have two dimensions in feet, but then you have the depth in inches. So we need to convert um, so that they're all the same. So if you'll remember, there's actually 12 inches in one foot. So if I want to convert 18 inches, if I want to know how many feet that is, Um, all I'm going to do is take 18 and divide by 12. Okay, so how do you know if you're dividing or multiplying? Um, it's actually pretty easy. So if you start out with a smaller unit, like inches, and then a larger, which is feet, smaller to larger, you divide. If it's larger to smaller, if I wanted to convert feet to inches, you multiply. So since I'm going smaller to larger, I'm going to divide. And I'm just going to divide 18 divided by 12, and you get 1.5. So we're going to pretend this 18 inches is 1.5 inches. Okay, now I'm set to find, when it says letter A, how many cubic yards of sand does Maya need? Cubic yards is your clue. That tells us we're looking for volume. And we have a rectangular solid here. So we're just going to do volume equals length times width times height. So we're just going to multiply 1.5 times 60, actually, not that it matters, but let me do 60 times 30, and then I'll do the height or the depth is 1.5. And when you multiply that out, you get, and I apologize, my pen is being annoying, you get 2,700 feet cubed. Okay, now here's the deal. The problem says how many cubic yards of sand. So I need to do a conversion. 
All right, if you'll recall, there's three feet in one yard. Okay, so I want cubic yards. Cubic means just third power. So if I raise one side to the third power, I have to do the same to the other. So here, 27 cubic feet is the same thing as one cubic yard. So all I'm going to do is convert here. So I'm going to take 2,700 cubic feet, and I'm going to multiply that by this conversion right here. Okay, I want feet cubed to cancel, so I want them to be diagonal from each other. So I'm going to take the 27 feet cubed and put it here, and I'm going to take the one yard cube and put it up top. So the feet cube will be canceled, and all I'll be left with is yards cubed. So now all you have to do is just do 2,700 times 1, which is 2,700, and then divide that by 27, and you get 100 cubic yards. So that's the answer to letter A. Okay. Now, how much will the sand cost? So it tells us that it's $27 per cubic yard. So I know I have 100 cubic yards, so I'm just going to take 100 and multiply that by 27. So it's going to cost $2,700 um, to have the sand um, replace the volleyball court. Okay, you can pause and read the next example and then unpause when you're ready uh, to work it out with us. The UCF Athletic Hall of Fame building features a statue of a large softball that is in need of painting. <clears throat> the softball has a diameter of 8.5 feet. Determine the surface area of the softball. If one quart of paint covers about 100 square feet, how many quarts of paint will the university need to buy to paint the softball. So letter A, we're first trying to find the surface area and a softball is a sphere. So to find the surface area of a sphere, we're gonna do four pi r squared. So I'm gonna have four times pi times the radius, okay, so they tell me in the problem that the diameter is 8.5. Remember that when you have a circle, that the um, diameter is the segment that passes through the center and goes from one side of the circle to the other. So if it tells me that the whole diameter is 8.5 feet, I just want the radius, which is just half the diameter. So I'm going to take half of 8.5, and that gives me 4.25. So that's my radius. And I'm going to square that. So you would type in 4 times pi, use the pi button, times 4.25 squared, and you end up with 226.98 feet squared. So that's how many square feet um, the softball is. Okay, so we need to determine how many quarts of paint the university needs to buy to paint the softball. And it tells us that one quart covers about 100 feet squared. So for part B, I'm going to take the total square feet, which is 226.98 and I'm going to divide that by 100 square feet to determine how many cans I would need. And if you divide 226.98 by 100, you get 2.27. So if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and purchase 2.27 cans, um, newsflash, they're not going to let you do that. You would need to purchase three cans, right? Or in this case, they're quarts. Okay, next let's, let's look at um, polyhedra, prisms, and pyramids. So a polyhedron is just a closed surface formed by the union of 
polygonal regions. Remember, a polygon is just a many-sided shape. Um, examples of polygons are squares, four-sided, trapezoids, four-sided, triangles, three-sided, pentagons, five-sided, dodecagon, 12-sided, and so on. Okay, so when you have a three-dimensional figure and it's enclosed by shapes that are polygons, you get a polyhedron. Okay, in a polyhedron, we've got vertices, which are the corners, the edges where the faces meet, and then the actual faces or the shapes or polygons that make up each side. So there's some examples of some polyhedron. There was a mathematician named Leonard Euler, and he was credited for um, finding the relationship between the number of edges, faces, and vertices. So the formula he came up with was vertices minus edges plus number of faces always equals two. So let's say I have a polyhedron that's got 20 vertices and 12 faces. How many edges would there be? Okay, so take a minute and try to solve it. So we're looking for the number of edges. Here's my formula. If I want to find the number of edges, that would be my x. Okay, it tells us we have 20 vertices. I don't know the number of edges. You could even leave it e. And I've got 12 faces. Okay, so now to solve for x, I'm going to combine like terms. So I would get 20 plus 12, which is 42, minus x equals 2. 32. And then I'm going to subtract 32. So I would get negative x equals 2 minus 32 is negative 30. And we would just multiply both sides by negative 1 or divide by negative 1, and you get x equals 30. So that polygon would have 30 edges. Um, we have what are called platonic solids, and those are special polyhedron where their faces are all regular polyhedron. So remember, the term regular means it has um, equal sides and equal angles. So we say congruent, right? That means equals. Congruent sides and angles. Okay, everything about it's perfect. Like a square is an example of a regular polygon by nature because all the sides are equal and all the angles are equal. So anytime you have a polyhedron that's made up of anything regular, we just call them platonic solids. Okay, so I have some um, over there to the right. And they're kind of cool because you can, you know, you can buy puzzle pieces and build those. You can even look for the nets online um, and, you know, print them and try to put those things together. And some of them really look very cool. So there's two types of polyhedra I'm going to look at. We're going to focus on and we've got prisms and pyramids. So what makes them different? So prisms have two bases. Pyramids only have one base. The other thing that makes them different is the faces, we call them the lateral faces of the prism, are all parallelograms. Whereas in a pyramid, the lateral faces are all triangles. So prisms have two bases, and their faces are parallelograms. And pyramids have one base, and their faces are triangles. So that's what sets them apart. For both prisms and pyramids, we name them by the shape of their base. So for instance, this one here, I see this has two bases. Here's a base down here and a base up here. And the bases are shaped like triangles, so we would call that a triangular prism. Okay, and I know it's a prism because it has two bases. Here we have a cube, okay? So all the bases and faces are uh, squares. 
Here, the bases are hexagons, six-sided figures, so we would actually call that a hexagonal prism. And then here, the bases are trapezoids, so we would call that a trapezoidal prism. And what we're going to do is practice finding um, volume and surface area of those figures. And that will be in the next video.